What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Dirt Castle for the next episode of Crashlands. We apparently have a lot of quests to turn in, so I'm gonna do that. Flux! You're back! What did you find out? I've got this. I recorded the whole thing. Perks of being a thick robot, right Jack? Pay plays back the conversation. Oh my, Hugo is... Hugo has been a thorn in our sides, but he's never been this ambitious before. Sorry, I forgot how to read for a second. With the lens, he'll have the power to transport anything to or from the planet. But the lens has been missing for a long time. I don't think we need to worry yet, but in the meantime... It's come to our attention that Hugo has made a weapons research breakthrough. He's already got lasers mounted on his head, what more could he need? Hugo is a power-hungry megalomaniac, Flux. There's, only, there's no upper limit to his needs. The weapon he's created is called a Beakler. It injects poison automatically on striking. Obviously, this is something Hugo shouldn't have. But we could definitely use something like that. Now you're thinking, robot. He hasn't built the thing yet, but the plans are stashed away in one of his outposts. It's far to the west. Should be an easy break-in. Our agent has stashed the key on the eastern edge of the outpost. Alright, we'll go snatch it. Anything else? Just talk to me again once you've constructed it. Otherwise, keep this quiet. Excellent. I'll have these disposed of, perhaps into one of Hugo's forts. Makalak smirks. As promised, the stony healing potion is yours. Remember, squeeze the fat-headed serpers gently. Thanks, Makalak. He's Makalak and he keeps it cracking. Stony health potion is going to be hella useful. We need that bad. Our last health potion wasn't getting it done, so I'm glad we finally got an upgrade. My mic stand is migrating on me. I got to buy a new... Got to get a new boom mic. Honestly, I need to get a new microphone, too. But I haven't found one yet that I like. I think I'm going to get an SM7B, but not totally sold on it yet. Flack, the firecrackers work great. Those bombs were all shoo shoo, and the wampus were like, ah, fire, we're dead. Sounds like a perfectly good field test. Move into full production, Flux, and if you don't mind, I've got another idea. Now, I've always loved explosions, ever since I was a wee quasar baby, searching for licks of sodium to bring to the water. But I've always wondered what if one could cause an explosion of a choking agent? Something that didn't burn, but poisoned. Like a poison bomb? Exactly, Talkbox. You could then technically catch something on fire and poison it. Amazing, right? Sounds plenty deadly. The glutterflies that roam these parts have quite the toxic poison in their abdomens. If I could just study one. Flux could try to domesticate one, right? For science, Flux, raise a glutterfly of your own and let me inspect it. I think they hold the key. You just want to grope a glutterfly. Don't, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. I know exactly what you're up to, you lobe-headed, squidward-looking bastards. That'll make him hurt. Now, where can we get that dish? Right, Will. Attention, I'm hearing whispers that a small Tendram village is being overrun by Tartils. Tartils? Those more to launch a creature's lethal. Surely Hugo Duco is behind it, Grandmammy. It happens to be the village that is run by a Tendram named Barnabas. Barnabas, fade a strange flower if Barnabas might know where you can get your dish. Indeed, Barnabas' engineering skills are not matched anywhere on the savannah. He might be the only one with the knowledge that you seek. Quit yammering and show us where he's at then. Yes, sir. Get to Barnapole and take out all the tartails you can find, then talk to Barnabas. Okay. So we're off to go destroy some tartails, which actually works out pretty great. Because I need to kill a lot of tartails, and there's not much I can do about that. We have the Beakler facility over there. I don't know exactly what I want to do next. But. Hmm. Let's go back to base real quick because we have no healing potions. I've been eating the fish raw because I have no other option and I'm thinking that might be a bad plan. Yep, I definitely need a new boom mic stand. I got it tightened up all the way. But it's doing this thing where it just like creeps downwards. Gravity just pulls it down. I also need to get floater back. Floater is so much better than all the other pets. I also made some Mark II harvest bombs just in case we needed those. So I'll throw those in right there. Get those nice and equipped. The other thing that we need to do is we need to brew ourselves. We got a bigger elixir. No, it's not what I needed. I needed the stony health potion, so that actually takes... Oh, that's perfect. That's actually exactly the sort of thing that we could use right now. That'll give us 51 potions to play around with. Which will be quite a bit more satisfactory. While those get taken care of... What other little things are around? Oh yeah, I unlocked an epic recipe. I don't know if I did it on camera or off. But I think it's in here. Take a look. Oh, we got the stuff that we needed to make the Tartil incubator. Good. Get that going. I unlocked it. It's right here, but it requires 
a giant, like, a mammoth helmet or something like that, and then it needs something that we get from domesticated Tartils. So just keep that in mind into the future. The grounder, on foot or on ground, the other on the grounder. One foot on the ground, the other on the grounder. Grants 20% electric resistance. Oh, it's a, okay. So it's just like a random little tool that we can use. Not that good. I need more amber and I do need some more nitro, so we'll get on that in just a second. This right here increases the number of fish in school by 40%. Well, I'm always a fan of aquatic education, so... I am a fan of the school system, and also education. No, I was not a fan of school when I was in it. Became a fan of school after I got out of it. So the tar is going to take five minutes to get done. Let's go ahead and gulp up our potions real quick. Those are going to go straight into the slot where I want them to go. We'll blow up the trees. We will knock them to and fro. And then finally, it'll be time to do some quests. I really like my Glutterfly. It's probably my favorite pet so far. The AoE is just really, really useful. That was incredible. That was way more satisfying than I expected it to be. Let's plant some more squee seeds while we're over here. There we go. Perfect. And I'll probably just put a little bit more wood in the field. Nothing ever hurts like wood in the field. Nothing is ever quite on that level. The Beekler facility is actually just a little bit up to the northwest, so I think going after that's probably a decent plan now that we've got the appropriate healing devices for our adventures. Yeah, I don't know if I feel like dealing with you right now, Verdant Glidopus. I'm only slaying you because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need some of your bits later on in order to upgrade my Glidopus again, so... Almost got nailed right there. It's alright, though. Perfect. What you're looking for, and the reason why I think he's better than a lot of the other pets is because he does that triple shot, and if he's point blank when he does that, he ends up doing a stupid amount of damage. We finish off the debris quest. That's all good to go. What is that? An ancient Glutterfly Queen. I don't think I want to deal with the Glutterfly. Although, is that one of the ones that I need in order to get the next upgrade for my little guy? I think it is. Let's see if I can stay on him for a minute. Maybe berserk out a tad. Woo! It is popping in here. Damn, son. That flew off quick. These potions rocking here. There goes one of them down. Poison's flying all over the place, although luckily, the poison procked before anything else went wrong, so it'll be all right. Our pet should be able to lay them out. Ancient Glutterfly Essence. I actually think I have enough of that. I did a lot of farming off camera when it came to getting some of these eggs, so we should be more or less good to go when it comes to some of these enemies. Shouldn't need too many more of their parts. I wasn't actually planning on getting into a fight that big. That was never something that I intended. Let's head up to the northwest. I'm going to try and avoid as many enemies as possible because I really don't feel like fighting with them right now. I've mentioned my grievances with that in the previous episodes. There seems to be just way too much aggro in this game. Where you can't, like, go away. I, it makes it easy because you can just walk away, but I'm not a walk away type of person. And so that combined... My personality combined with the aggro system in this game. Walking away is not something that I ever accomplish very well. If something attacks me, I have to attack it back. That's the way the universe works. Got the power of flight. That'll help us get there a little faster. I love floating. That'd be so much better than walking. Just being able to levitate everywhere. Oh, and then what would that feel like, though, to be suspended up in the air by something that holds your back? It'd be kind of like those guys that get off on hooking themselves up to those hooks and hanging from the ceiling or whatever. I don't know if you've seen those guys. They get, like, these big ring piercings, and then they suspend themselves. No, that's mine. They suspend themselves from, like, the ceiling or from, like, these big engine hoist type things. And they say it's therapeutic because it helps them feel weightless. I guess it helps with some kinds of anxiety or something like that. I don't know. I'm not a master of any of that. Seems kind of wild to me, though, to punch holes in your skin and then hang from a ceiling, but doesn't hurt me at all, so I don't care what they do. Works fine for me. We just got a whole bunch of those. I think that's a fishing power shrine, but I don't think I'm going to be fishing anytime soon, so I'm not going to pick it up. How close are we here? Oh, we actually almost went right by it. I will pick up that dirt, and this lake actually poses no threat as well, which is really, really sweet because I hate going around things. Going around things takes too long. Going through them is easier. So there's the key that we needed. Will more than likely be the key aspect of our rescue here. Although we do have a lot of really violent looking animals inside that could seriously injure us. He trapped himself inside. Dumbass. Yeah, use that shit. 
and then we'll get in here and we'll try to make do with all these random wampus that they got around. They all seem to be very, very fascinated with my demise. I, on the other hand, am not so convinced that I want to die like that, G. I'm going to see if I can stay on them. Long enough to get that poison dripping off their frame. He's down. This Glidopus apparently shares some common concern for the plight of Wampets and has decided to fight us. Or I guess he can fight us or he can glide us. Either way, he wants to light us up. Perfect. Let's get some treasure. What's that right there? The Beakler. So does it do anything? Let's go back to base and we'll take a look and see what the Beakler does. That idiot's trapped behind the base anyway, so it doesn't matter. We'll just leave him behind. We'll leave him behind as so frequently happened to him in junior high. Back home we go. I just turned half my audience against me. They're like, no, I got left behind in high school, you monster. How could you do that to that poor Glidopus? Let him grope you. He deserves it. Just let him have a freebie. Like, whoa, I believe you gotta, you gotta work for it. Tartil! I will probably name him... Hmm. I think I'll name him Pond Pounder. No, not Poon Pounder. God damn it. Now this all seems Freudian, doesn't it? He's Pond Pounder. He might actually be a pretty decent mob, too, because that fire thing hurts like hell once it starts to tick up a little bit. What do I need in order to make the Tartil happier? Is it in this one right here? It's like a nuclear barrel thing. He definitely needs to be upgraded before we can deploy him. So in order to do that, I need way more Tartle Tongues. I need way more of the stuff from the big Tartles. And then I need more Glotus Berries. That's actually a pretty tall order. It's a pretty tall order right there. That one might be hard to get a hold of. What's going on with my sword right now? What's glowing around me? There's like a little hovering light source that's following me. I don't like that. These fairy Zelda shenanigans. Firecracker's pretty good. I kind of want more of those. Yeah, let's make a bunch of those. We'll make use of those to the best of our abilities. I got enough gas sacks to do it, so why not? Why not? I'm thinking that... Hmm. Let's build some wooden floors, I guess. Like 150 of them. I'm going to expand my house a little bit further. Make like a little barn area where all my animals can go so that's organized. There's our 30 bombs right there. 30 bombs, not to be confused with our dirty bombs, which are really, really, really great at distributing pornography around. Once these are finished, got one more tick and then we'll have 90 floors ready to go. Probably could use some extra walls as well. So that'll work. Let's get the floor plan laid down. I'm thinking this probably won't even be attached to the rest of it. Yeah, I'll get rid of the resource in just a minute. Nah, that's not good. I don't want that there. That's perfect, though. And then we'll go back through, we'll kill off those resources, and we'll make like a different little section of housing right here. So that we can take down some of these beds for the animals, and then we'll just put them in a line so that we got an easy selection. This will be like our Pokemon Center, as it were. We can access all of our lovely little friends. I'm gonna knock out that wall right now. Because it seems easier than going around. Take those walls right there. And while we're in a walling mood. Take those around like so. Put the door over there. Yeah, and that seems pretty, pretty good. Give me all of those so that they're not clogging the area up anymore. Probably take back some of the trophies too. And we'll put a trophy over there. Take this little guy and put a trophy on that side. And then we'll put in a couple of log nests around here. Perfecto. Couldn't have asked for anything better. So now that we've got all of our ducks in a row, our proverbial ducks anyways, these would not be an actual, these aren't de facto ducks or literal ducks. These are all metaphorical ducks. 
Those still have not grown, which actually surprises me. Those take quite a bit longer. Okay, let's go turtle hunting because I need a bunch of turtle stuff anyways. So that'll make my job really, really easy. Turn this into grandmammies while we're out and about. While we're in the neighborhood, why not? I made the flamethrower yet either, and I really want to. A perfect specimen, and look at this. The poison can be mixed into a semi-stable state that turns gases on impact. That sounds perfect for a bomb. Indeed it is. If you use a fleshy, somewhat pliable housing, such as one of those fat-headed slurpers, it'll be even more pocketable. Thanks for doing the field research, Flux. I think these are ready for mass production. Just don't slip with one in your pocket. Cool. <laughs> it's just the plant in a flower plot shoved inside the fish's mouth. Oh man, that's awesome. This game is the best. Let's go southeast for a little while. Hopefully we'll pick up one of those run speed buffs along the way. Because I've got a whole lot of them left. I think I used up all of my speed potions. So we're hoofing it the old-fashioned way. And that is to say one foot in front of the other. But I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Soon you'll be getting lots of gravel now. One foot in front of the other. What if you only have one foot, though? I guess it would be your one foot is in front of your one foot. Oh, I need these. These gasic plants. I'm super low on these. A gasic meister. It's a gasic meister. And what the hell is it used for? Its name is written in blue, so I assume it's a little bit less less available or common than some of the other things that are dropping, but who even knows anymore? Who even knows anymore? This game has an abundance of craftable objects. It, it feels like somebody went a little bit overboard with the crafting. Not in a bad way, but somebody just sat down one night and was like, I'm going to make three or four items. And then the next day, there was like 180 items on his hard drive that he had made. And he was like, well, I guess I got to put them all in the game now. Shit. I don't want to waste my own time or anything, which believe me, that is the bane of the self-motivated person wasting time on like wasting work on things I make so many videos that you guys just don't even see I just I broom them and then they never get uploaded they just sit on my hard drive forever I've got like full series of like 10 15 episodes of random games that I missed the release window or whatever and then because I missed the release window I was just like ah I'm just not gonna upload them because I only want to do like four videos a day and I don't want to put too many videos on my channel and they just never see the light of day is what it is I guess I don't know I record a lot of episodes every day. I've heard other YouTubers be like, I have to record four episodes today. That's going to be a really, really busy day. Eh, I don't know. Usually I do about seven. Sometimes I go over. Sometimes I do six. But usually I do seven a day. Can't upload seven a day, though, because YouTube penalizes you for that shit. Just to get rid of what people did. Is, see, I get punished by exploitative people. I upload content because I just have a lot of it. And I record for long periods of time in a row. However, there were people who realized that if you spammed a lot of content, you could take over the search returns for stuff, and so YouTube had to punish them in one way or another. And so YouTube made it so that if you spam out content, you get punished for it now. And my channel is definitely one of those channels. The sweet spot seems to be about two episodes a day. Even one episode a day is too much. I think that YouTube is trying to turn itself into, like, the new free Netflix, basically. And so they're trying to encourage people to make, like, very, very high quality content. The, po the problem with that is that YouTube was always founded on anybody being able to put up anything that they wanted whenever. And so I don't think they'll be successful at curating their content like that. Like, yeah, there is really, really high quality content. But once you do that, you create a barrier for entry that has existed for TV and other mediums since the dawn of time. And I think that's a bit of a bummer. One of the cool things about YouTube is that anybody can do it. It could be some random guy from Poland in his garage. It can be some random guy from Yonkers in his garage. You know, and that's one of the really, really cool things about YouTube to me is that there's not really like a high boundary for entry. It doesn't trap people out. You don't need $50,000 cameras just to get started, which I think is the big thing that gets people locked. I got a friend that went to school for cinematography and became a cameraman for a living, and that was one of his big business expenses as a free like as a freelance photographer, like filming nature documentaries and stuff like that was he had to drop an insane amount of money. I think he took out loans so that he could start working actually. He had to spend an insane amount of money on his own camera so that he could be freelance like that and not be tied to anybody else's operation. And it was a lot of money. It was like five figures and beyond. More money than most people have to start off with. He had to put himself in debt in order to do it. Well, I need these really bad too. Yeah, buddy. 
Those things are super useful. Glotus berries, I need like a thousand of you so that I can make my Tartil stronger. So that my Tartil can grow, fed by the earth and the corpses of his foes around him. Yeah, I waste my own time all the time. It frustrates me. I don't like that I do it. But there is some strategery that goes into this whole YouTube business. Strategery that I'm not a fan of. I wish that there was no strategery or conniving cunningry going around in the whole thing, but it is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do in order to stay where you're at. It's not even like I almost said to stay on top, but I'm not on top. I'm like back of the middle of the pack. You know what I mean? And just to keep that position is exhausting sometimes. It all turns into a big competition one day. And then you sit there and be like, damn, I wish it wasn't a competition anymore. But it's too late. You're too far in. You're too far in and it's a contest already. It's a contest for everybody else. So you might as well get on board with it. Yeah, I think these are the ones that I have trouble outrunning. Because they deal a lot of damage. This might be the perfect individual to hit with a firebomb then. I would also very much like to get a speed buff on me. If I can. Yeah, that's why. Is even if you take off running the second he fires... Can't outrun it very well. Is that another Tartle Pappy? I think the Tartle Pappies will be useful. As long as we can keep ourselves alive in the process. Definitely got to retreat a little bit early if you want to stay out of the way of that big AoE that he does. And now that we got two of them, it may not even be really possible. Just keep the fire bombs on him and stay away. Yeah, that's the one that gets you right there, unless you leave early. Unless you leave early. I'm getting plenty of the stuff that I already have. It's more the stuff that I don't have. Like the tongues that I'm looking for here. Glotus berries work out fine, too. I'll take that as a consolation prize. Glotus berries sound absolutely fantastic. I think we're just about out of time for the day, so I might cut this one a little bit shorter. Yeah, it's weird how... I don't know. Like, everybody else is doing the YouTube game like it's a competition, and so you kind of just get sucked into it. It's odd like that. And I think it's because YouTube is a zero-sum game, too. If you win, everyone else loses. And that's just the way that it goes. Like, that's how the system is designed to work from the top to the bottom. And so it doesn't make it super... doesn't make it super conducive to productive relationships with other people, because at any moment... They could really, really, really sincerely hurt you, so you tend to distance yourself from other content creators just because there's that natural desire to be like, Why you do this to me? I thought we was friends. When it's not like that, it's just business. It's not personal. It is what it is. Another aspect of YouTubing that I strongly dislike. And don't really, you have to part, you have to play by those rules. You don't really have a choice. So anyways, I'll see y'all next time. Hi to everybody. This is Crashlands, a very fun little game. Probably one of my favorite games in a while. Lots of fun to play. I will see you all in future episodes. I hope the game continues to garner more praise from the internet masses. It's doing better now. It's got about 400 reviews on Steam as of the writing of this episode, which means that it's pretty successful. Over a thousand reviews means that the game is just like an unequivocal... It is a massive indie success, so... 400 is definitely not bad, and it's continuing to accrue, you know, 10, 20 reviews every day, so I'm thinking it'll probably be a big release. It'll just take a little bit more time. A pearl scale hover buoy. I guess if you like decking your house out nautical shit, the game is giving you the option to do so. Not a big fan of it, but I'm forced to live with it because my girlfriend's into nautical stuff. I'll see y'all later. Hi to everybody.